Okay, so let's explain. That's a hard word. Let's explain why a poor sampling plan can result in misleading conclusions. Now, before we just jump into like this as a whole, I want to break this down because we need to know what we're talking about. So first things first, let's talk about sampling errors. So sometimes when we're actually just doing the sampling, right, we're, we're doing a survey, trying to pick up some samples, we make errors. Now, if it's a sampling error, it's the process itself. For example, if the sample is not a good representation of the population. So let's say that I want to know uh, favorite sports of people in a particular city. So I go outside the baseball stadium during a game and I take a survey of people hanging out at the baseball stadium um, to ask them their favorite sport. That's horrible. If they're at a baseball game, better chance that they're going to be say baseball, right? Especially at that moment. So that is not a good representation of the population. That would be a sampling error. The process itself is what sucks right there. Okay. Basically, we also like to say the larger the sample, the smaller the error. So if you're dealing with a very large sample size, probably better chance that you're going to have a wider variety of who you're talking to. And so you're going to get a better representation. So that's one. Now we also have non sampling errors. So this is caused by factors not related to the process itself. So perhaps you're keeping uh, track of your stuff on your iPad, right? Results on your iPad and your iPad dies, right? Uh, just it doesn't turn on anymore. You have a defective device. You lose information in some way, shape or form. That's just kind of like outside the sampling process. It's a non sampling error. We have a minor problem. Now we have what we call sampling bias. So bias, uh, sampling bias is when not all members of population have an equal chance of being chosen. And as I mentioned, convenient sampling is an example of this. Again, if I'm hanging out at the baseball stadium asking questions of people hanging, you know, going by there, not all members have an equal chance of being chosen because not everybody is going to hang out at a baseball stadium on a random evening, right? So sampling bias is when you're, you're kind of putting the, uh, not everybody's having an equal chance. I don't, words are hard, right? But that's about convenient sampling where you go when it's easy for you, not where you get the best representation of people. And then when we talk about bias in general, this can occur in a lot of different ways. So as we talked about the sample chosen, if you're using convenient sampling of picking people where it's convenient for you as the sampler, not where you're getting the best people. Um, we talk about bias in questions and how they are asked. If you ask leading questions um, or you add words in there to make them think like, do you support like hurting animals? What? And no person in their right mind would say yes to that, right? So that's something just leading question, bias questions. And then the environment. If you put people in a different environment, it's going to could possibly change how they answer questions. So here's the thing. All of these things with bias, with sampling errors, these can all lead to misleading conclusions, to a poor sampling plan that you have bias where you have errors. All of that can lead to bad conclusions and a bad sample and a bad survey, bad results that just isn't good. So throw that all together, uh, avoid errors as much as possible, avoid bias as much possible, and that'll give you some better conclusions.